guys it's Jen welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another dinner ideas video if you are new welcome I share lots of food videos here and fun ideas so I hope that you stick around I'm going to be sharing nine dinner ideas with you in this video among them are an idea for steak and twice baked potatoes some pork stroganoff meatballs with peas and potatoes and some egg noodles as well as some good old BLTs with a side of mac and cheese this is a quick one I'm also going to be sharing how I made some apple and goat cheese flatbreads something very different but delicious a recipe for quick air fryer barbecue chicken with cheesy potatoes and broccoli on the side as well as a simple dinner of hot dogs and french fries what can beat that so the first idea that I'm sharing with you is for steaks and twice baked potatoes. I had some filet steaks in my freezer that I wanted to get used up and so I just have these here on a plate with a little bit of olive oil drizzled on them and salt and pepper. While my skillet was heating up, I'm going to be cooking those in a cast iron skillet. I went ahead and cut up some veggies with ranch. This is something that I always like to keep in my refrigerator so that we can snack on it throughout the week. My kids love uh, veggies and ranch, and then it's also a quick side for dinner as well. So typically what I do is I'll sear the fillets on each side in my cast iron skillet and then pop the cast iron skillet right in the oven at 400 degrees for about five to 10 minutes until the steak is done to your liking and I serve that with some broccoli cheddar uh, twice baked potatoes if you want to see how I made these twice baked potatoes I'll link that video down below basically I just made twice baked potatoes and added broccoli to the mixture okay so next is a recipe for pork stroganoff meatballs and I will link this recipe down below It's actually a home chef recipe but you can definitely recreate their recipes they have them online if you're not interested in trying out the meal delivery service so in my bowl I have some ground pork I added in some breadcrumbs some seasoning and I'm also adding some Worcestershire sauce that was not in the original recipe but I always had add Worcestershire to my meatballs so I just went ahead and and did that and then the recipe also called for some ricotta cheese um, that's something that I have put in meatballs before and it does help the meatballs um, be a little bit moister which is nice and I also added a little bit of half and half you could add milk also to moisten the mixture so I always like to mix up my meatball mixture with a fork because I think that it helps keep the mixture light. It helps not to over mix it. And then what I'm doing is just rolling these into about ping pong sized balls and putting them in a casserole dish that I greased with cooking spray. I have never honestly really thought to make stroganoff meatballs with ground pork before, but I would really encourage you to try this. It was actually really, really good. And the recipe did come with like a stroganoff sauce um, packet, which would probably be kind of hard to recreate at home. But I'll link another recipe that I've used before for instant pot stroganoff that's really good. So I'm sure you could come up with something between the two recipes, but everyone really liked this. And it was one of those meals where when I told everyone what we were having they were kind of like ugh, <laughs> but then once everyone ate it they were like wow this is really good so what I'm gonna end up doing is popping this casserole dish into the oven to allow the meatballs to bake through and then when it's about 10 minutes from being done I'll add the sauce mixture and just kind of let that bubble over the meatballs until it is um, cooked through in this pan I just had some pre-cooked baby red potatoes along with some seasoning some olive oil and some peas and I pop those into the oven to roast along with the meatballs I did end up cooking some egg noodles with this because I thought that the meatballs kind of needed something to soak up the sauce but here you can see the meatballs are almost done I went ahead and poured the sauce mixture over those I did kind of um, amp up the sauce a little bit with some more Worcestershire sauce and some sour cream and then I cooked half a bag of egg noodles and just tossed those with some butter and we had that with the um, 
meatballs on the top. It was really, really good. So here's what the meatballs looked like when they were done. Like I said, everybody loved this. It was a total crowd pleaser. Here we have the meatballs with the sauce and the egg noodles and the peas and potatoes on the side. Totally delicious and I definitely want to recreate this again. Okay, so this recipe, or I'm sorry, this meal rather was kind of a throw together night. I had some broccoli in the fridge that I needed to get used up and so I went ahead and steamed that. And on this night also, I was filming a um, some meal prep for cheese manicotti and so we had some of that to eat and I wanted to have garlic bread with it, but I didn't have any fancy garlic bread and so I just made garlic bread out of regular like sliced wheat sandwich bread. I found a taste of home recipe online and I can link that down below if you're interested. But here is the manicotti that I meal prepped. I also took some over to my grandparents. Um, I had some for lunch that week and then we ate a pan of it as well for that night. Adam also had some short ribs that he had cooked earlier in the week and so we warmed those up like I said just kind of a hodgepodge dinner and I totally forgot to take a clip of the whole thing but here's how the garlic toast turned out totally not fancy but the kids loved it. So if you guys have been watching me for a while, you know that I have two kids and I work full time. Uh, so it's always important for me to have at least a couple meals each week that are super quick and easy. And so on this particular night, I got home after work. I didn't really feel like cooking anything, but I had all the ingredients for BLTs. And so that's what I decided to make. So you saw me there just pouring some of the macaroni into boiling water. Um, I have really been liking the Cracker Barrel uh, mac and cheese. It is really good and my whole family likes it a lot better than Kraft and so that's what we've been using lately and you could see me chopping up the tomatoes there or slicing them rather. I cooked my bacon in the oven and we just had some toasted wheat bread with BLTs and mayo. It was so delicious and simple. I would definitely recommend that. Okay, so this is um, a recipe for apple and goat cheese flatbreads, and I'll link this recipe down below. Um, it starts out by caramelizing some onions, which um, takes a little bit, but definitely keep it over medium to medium low heat and give it some time and the mush, or I'm sorry, the mushrooms, the onions will caramelize. I also went ahead and candied some walnuts for the top of the flatbreads. This is just walnuts with a little bit of sugar and water. And you can see here I had some flatbreads with cheese on them, so mozzarella and an apple that I sliced super thinly, drizzled some olive oil over the top, and then popped those in the oven for about 20 minutes until the apples are cooked through. When the flatbreads are done, you can top them with some arugula and some goat cheese and the candied walnuts. These are really, really good, but you know what would have made them even better is a drizzle of that balsamic syrup over the top. I would definitely make these again, but add that for sure. My kids definitely did not eat these. Um, Adam and I ate them, only my kids had sandwiches, but they, they love sandwich night, so <laughs> it all worked out fine. Okay, so if you guys watched my last weekend prep video, I'll link it down below, but I shared kind of how I make my beef and noodles. Um, I made this on a weekend. It's something that takes a long time in the crock pot, and so um, it's something that I typically try to make uh, when I have more time, when I'm off, or on the weekend. So what I did was I just cooked a chuck roast in my crock pot. You can see the broth I have left in the bottom of there, and then I removed the roast and put it into a 9 by 13 dish to cool. And so once it's cool, you can go ahead and shred the beef, and then that's what you'll use to mix with the noodles. Um, I actually found a recipe online that's similar to the recipe that I use if you guys want to kind of use that as a guide. Um, but once you make this, you know, one time or a couple times, you'll find out that it's super easy. If you cook your roast and you find that it's not tender enough or it's not like falling apart, you probably need to cook it longer in the crock pot. That will make it more tender. I am also going to use this broth that's in the bottom. I'm going to use my fat strainer to um, strain it out before I add it to the mix. But in this pot here, I just have 10 cups of beef broth. I like to use like the Knorr um, 
beef bouillon granules and I mix it with hot water and then that's what I boil my noodles in. So I bring that to a boil. Once that comes to a boil, I add the frozen egg noodles. Um, the brand that I use is Reams. And I'm not sure if they're available like all over the country. I know that here in the Midwest, we have them. Um, we also have store brand ones available, but I, I'm not sure if they're available all over. This is what the package looks like. So once your broth comes to a rapid boil, you can add the noodles. Um, you can also do this with turkey or chicken. So you can make turkey and noodles or chicken and noodles if you have you know, different types of meats that you want to use up. Um, the secret, or not really the secret, but the key to doing this is making sure that you boil the noodles in some type of broth or stock. If you don't, the noodles really won't have any flavor. So after I put the noodles in, um, you can set the timer to 20 minutes. Just let those boil until they are tender. And then we'll go ahead and add those to um, the, the crock pot with the shredded beef. And then I do thicken the broth a little bit also with some cornstarch. Um, you can see that I shredded the beef in there. And then this is what the stock looked like in the bottom of the crock pot. I just use my fat separator to make sure that they're, you know, that I keep the grease out of them. Okay, so after the noodles are done cooking, I went ahead and put those in the crock pot with the beef, and I left the rest of the stock or broth that the noodles cooked in in my pot here and brought that to a simmer. I did add some cornstarch slurry, so cornstarch mixed with a little bit of cold water. This is totally a personal preference. If you wanted it to be more like a beef and noodle soup, you could not, or you don't really have to add the cornstarch, but since I wanted this to be more of like a stew consistency, I guess. We usually eat it like on plates, not bowls. Um, so I obviously don't want it to be very <laughs> soupy. Um, then once I bring this back up to a boil, the the stock will thim simmer up, thimmer up, simmer up to more of a gravy consistency. And then I can add the beef gravy into the noodles with the beef. And I just let it sit in the crock pot for like an hour on low or warm. And the noodles will continue to absorb some of that flavor um, and some of that gravy. And it's really, really good. This is a totally like non-fancy, like Midwest as it gets meal, <laughs> but everyone loves it. It's very much comfort food. So we have the beef and noodles uh, with some garlic bread and um, green beans. And then I also had some fruit salad on the side. So that was dinner on this night. Okay, so on this night I made homemade pizza and this pizza dough recipe was out of one of my cookbooks called Bread Illustrated by um, America's Test Kitchen. I'll link it down below, but there you just saw the sausage that I used for the top of the pizza. And then here is the two uh, dough balls that I got from this recipe. Those are just resting on the counter. Um, this recipe did make two uh, about medium sized pizzas, or I guess probably large pizzas. Um, but here's the cookbook. I would definitely recommend this. I've been loving looking through it and cooking out of it. I would actually recommend any of America's Test Kitchen cookbooks. I'm a huge fan of all of their cookbooks. But um, here's the recipe. It makes two pizzas. And once the dough is done resting, then you can go ahead and roll it out. But I also made some ravioli on this particular night just because I had some in the fridge and I had a little bit of extra pizza sauce. Uh, my daughter Kira really likes ravioli and so that's what I ended up making on the side. Here is the sausage that I browned up for um, the pizza along with the turkey pepperoni that I used. And then I make my own marinara sauce and I have it in the freezer. So I always have marinara sauce on hand, but if you wanted to make this and you didn't have it, you could definitely use jarred pizza sauce or jarred marinara sauce. It's just something that I like to do. I get the big cans of San Marzano tomatoes from Costco and then I cook them with like 
olive oil and garlic and basil and then puree them up and put them into jars and put them in the freezer and then I always have homemade marinara sauce so that's what I used I also added some mushrooms to this pizza Adam my my husband is the only one that likes mushrooms um, on his pizza but that's okay he can have half a pizza with sausage and mushrooms just to himself <laughs> Another thing I always like to do when I make homemade pizza, if I can, is to shred my own mozzarella cheese. I just think that the freshly shredded cheese melts so much better, um, obviously better than the pre-shredded kind because the pre-shredded mozzarella has like a an anti-caking agent on it, which can make the cheese a little bit tough when it melts. So you saw me there making the sausage pizza. This one is gonna be half cheese, half pepperoni. I actually had to shred some extra cheese, which I did off camera there, but here's what the pizza looked like when it came out of the oven. The undersides actually browned really, really well. I'm actually gonna make this again this week using whole milk mozzarella and see if I can get it to taste a little bit more like my favorite pizzeria here in town, so we'll see. But I'll type this recipe out in the description box below if you guys are interested in trying it out. I would definitely recommend this crust recipe. It's very good. We had this with some leftover caprese salad and then I also cut up some raw veggies on the side. So that was dinner on this particular night. Okay, so for this night's dinner, I actually made some barbecue chicken in the air fryer and I made some cheesy hash brown casserole. Some people, people call these all different things. I've heard them called party potatoes. I've heard them call funeral potatoes. We call, we, I've, we've always called them cheesy potatoes. I don't know, that's just what my parents always called them growing up, but no matter what you call them, they are delicious. So I'll leave the recipe down below, um, the one that I use, but for the potatoes, you'll need some grated cheese, some melted butter, some sour cream. I add a little bit of milk or half and half to mine just to make sure that the um, mixture mixes well with the shredded potatoes, but that's optional. I'm also using a can of cream of chicken soup. All I had was cream of chicken with herbs, but that worked just fine. And then I'm adding some onion powder and some salt and pepper. You could also add chopped onion if you wanted to. I'm not a huge fan of chopped onion in dishes like this, so I prefer to use onion powder. Um, I'm just using a whisk to whisk this together. That's the best way to combine everything. And then I'll add my um, frozen hash brown potatoes. So I do wanna say that when you make this, make sure that you thaw the um, shredded hash browns out before you mix this together and put it in the oven. You can do it from frozen, but it will take quite a long time to bake. Um, it's a lot faster if you have them thawed out ahead of time. So I'm just mixing those in. I prefer to use the shredded hash browns instead of the cubed ones, but you could totally use either. Whatever you have on hand is fine. This makes enough for a nine by 13 dish, and these are actually pretty decent as leftovers. You can actually eat them leftover for breakfast, which we do quite often uh, the night after I make these. It does make quite a large batch. So I'm just spreading those into um, the pan. Do make sure that you grease the pan because of all that cheese in there it will definitely stick. Now I like to top mine with crushed up potato chips, which you'll see here in a little bit. So I decided to make barbecue chicken breasts in the air fryer and what I have here is just four chicken breasts and I've coated these in this barbecue porcosaurus rub. I have no idea how to get this anymore. I got it uh, randomly at the airport when I was in Memphis for work last year, but it is a really good rub. So I'm putting these in the air fryer at 360. Um, I think in total I cook them for 10 minutes on each side. So 360 for 20 minutes total. When the potatoes were about 10 minutes from being done, I took them out of the oven, sprinkled a little bit of extra cheese over the top and some crushed up potato chips. And oh yes, we're having broccoli again. <laughs> My kids actually love steamed broccoli, so we have it quite often. When the chicken was halfway done, I flipped them over and put some barbecue sauce on there to glaze them. And this turned out so good. I would definitely 
recommend making chicken breasts like this if you have an air fryer. So this is how the chicken breasts turned out. I let those rest for about five minutes and then I sliced them up. They were perfectly tender and juicy. Here is the hash brown casserole. Definitely try those crushed up potato chips on top. It just makes the dish. And then again, our steamed broccoli with butter, salt, and pepper. So this is what our plates looked like on this night. This was really good. It hit the spot. Everyone loved it. Um, I haven't made barbecue chicken in a long time, and I've actually never made it before in the air fryer, but would definitely recommend trying that if you indeed do have an air fryer. Okay, so last but not least, we are having hot dogs and french fries. We're keeping it real around here. So this was another, I got home from work late and didn't know what to make, and here we go. So I have these super crispy crinkle cut fries that I pulled out of the freezer, and oh yes, I decided to deep fry them because I haven't deep fried french fries in a while. I've deep fried other things <laughs> within the last little bit during this quarantine, uh, but I haven't deep fried french fries in a while, and so I do have to say, that even though deep frying is a pain in the butt, it does make some delicious French fries. I went ahead and toasted the hot dogs up in the skillet. And yeah, that's, that's really all I have to say about this dinner. Uh, French fries with ketchup and a hot dog with mustard and relish. Pretty self-explanatory, but you can bet that everyone gobbled this up without any complaints. So I want to thank you guys again for being here and watching this video. I appreciate your support. If you have any recipes that you'd like me to try that you haven't seen me make before, leave those in the comments down below. And here are two other dinner videos that I think you'll enjoy. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.